Hello, my name's Hazel Holder. I'm a voice and dialect coach. And this video is intended to offer you some tips to help your young actors extend their voice into the space and also help them to have more clarity with the text that they are using. So one of the first questions I would like to ask and that we should be asking is, first of all, can the actor be heard? And if they can't be heard, is this because they are not using breath efficiently? So here are some tips to help them connect to breath and then also help them to support their voice into the text. So one of the reasons why they may not be connecting to their breath may be because of tension. So one of the first things that we want to do is to loosen up the body. So anything that you can do to help them do that, whether it's playing music and having a dance, just shaking out, playing a game, all of those things are going to help release tension from the body and allow them to feel, um, have a sense of ease. So once you have released any physical tensions that may inhibit the voice, then we should look at breath. So something that the young actors could do at home or in the space, if you have balloons, or if you don't have balloons, maybe they can imagine that they are blowing up a balloon. This will help them, hopefully, to connect to the large abdominal muscles that support breath. So by taking the time maybe you ask them to place a hand on the belly so that they can feel that connection It's not to say that when we are breathing like this, that this is going to be the same for the voice work. That's quite um, strong. But this is just so that they can feel that actually it's these muscles that will support the voice rather than taking the breath into the chest. We want to focus their attention down into the lower torso, into the belly. So here is that belly breath exercise. So first of all, asking them to place a hand on the lower belly and just notice their breath. Hopefully they'll notice that their hand is moving slightly, especially if we ask them to release the belly muscles. And if they're in a private space at home, hopefully those belly muscles are already released. And then asking them to take an imaginary balloon or to take a real balloon. And by imagining that they are transferring the air from one balloon that may be the belly into the real or imagined balloon. hopefully they would feel the contraction, the engagement of those belly muscles as they blow into the imagined or real balloon. And then you ask them to release those belly muscles and then the breath, the air outside will drop back into the lungs once we've released those belly muscles. We should only really ask them to do this exercise probably twice because it can get quite heady. You can feel a little bit lightheaded when you start doing this exercise. And especially if you're not used to it, you may kind of like use too much energy, blow into the balloon too much. So really you only want to ask them to do the out breath a maximum of three times. But really I would probably say let's stick to two. So now that we have connected the student, the actor, the young actor to their breath, in order for them to feel like their breath can support their voice into text, we'll do another exercise. 
And instead of using words, we're going to use a fricative sound or a vibrating sound that they can really feel at the front of their face, but also it allows this sound, this constant stream of air, to need a constant stream of their breath flowing. So imagining some text or maybe even counting, um, we can transplant a V TH sound or a V or a Zh sound instead of the text. And as an example, I will use Portia's speech in Julius Caesar. So again, placing a hand on my belly, on my lower belly. I notice my breath. Take my mind's eye to my lower breath. So what you're asking the student to do there is to say the text, to sound the text as they would, so it has a real flow and connection rather than be broken up. So we don't want <laughs> So you want to keep that constant stream of air as if they are speaking, and then hopefully they can feel again the engagement of their lower abdominal muscles supporting that flow of breath. And then, so from standing and focusing on their breath, you want to allow them to be in the space. I know with the restrictions of COVID at the moment, or if, the, if you're doing this session on Zoom, to allow them to physically be free. So it's almost as if you are playing the scene out, but instead of text, the words that you and me that we understand actually your form of communication is using this fricative sound <laughs> hopefully this allows them to feel that strong engagement of those lower abdominal muscles so earlier we talked about tension and as we move through these breath exercises we want to remind the students the young actors to keep scanning their body for tension because we don't want to be kind of like releasing one area and still placing tension in another so something to for you to be aware of is asking their knees to be soft because often we will lock our knees as we think about the belly as we think about the breath, um, as we think about protecting ourselves with voice work. Um, voice work is very revealing and people feel very vulnerable when we do voice work. So not pushing them into the work, but inviting them into the work. Um, so always asking them to feel a sense of ease in the body. So those relaxed knees, also asking the bum to be relaxed, also making sure that as you go through the work that you can add in some shakes so that you don't just go from exercise to exercise, but you space out, uh, you, you place some kind of like body release within the exercises, between the exercises. Another simple exercise that may help them to feel the placement of their breath within the lower torso is a very simple bear hug. So asking them to hug themselves and to breathe into their lower back. And also sometimes having a very gentle flopping over. I'll just move the screen so you can see a little bit more of my torso.
and then dropping the arms and then just having that very gentle roll up feeling the head loosely on top of the shoulders and it's good for them to know also that all of this kind of movement releasing tensions is also really great for allowing the voice to allowing the body sorry to be the amplification of the voice so all of this kind of like shaking in between releasing all of those tensions <sighs> making sure that the jaw is loose as they do that that you're not doing that with a tight jaw and then creating other problems with tension in muscles good all of that again shaking the legs all things that i'm sure you do already but it's so that we know why we're doing them and this just absolutely allows the muscles in the body to vibrate um, to be kind of like secondary vibration for the voice for a voice that will then travel in space so I'd like to take us on to resonance now. So a few exercises um, that we can do for resonance. So one of the first things that we could do for resonance is we could look at making sure, first of all, that the channel, that this space where the voice is going to primary be the primary um, place of resonance is really open and free. And so one of the first exercises that you could do is asking them to imagine. It's really great for um, the actors to continually have their imagination um, peaked as opposed to maybe having the genuine article there, but always asking them to imagine that they have a mirror in their hand very small mirror and what they're going to do is they're going to clean that mirror they're going to frost it up with their breath and then ask them what are they feeling on their hand and they should feel warm air a flow of warm air and especially if you ask them to frost up the mirror or heat up the mirror, um, can't quite think of the word, um, with their hands, but without any sound. So they don't want to be doing this. That means that there is constriction within the throat muscles. You want to make sure that they can do that um, warm flow of air onto the hand without any sound. So this exercise is really helpful for later on in their warm up or in the preparation for performing in that you can take that exercise onto text. So maybe start with some counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That just allows them to feel that open throat position as they go into text and keep reminding them that actually it's like a door being closed so if the throat is tight the door is closed and we can't actually hear you so allowing the throat to feel open is actually allowing the sound out so that previous exercise was from christina shovel's book voice work um, art and science in changing voices and another exercise that I like regarding resonance work is from Barbara Hausman's book Finding Your Voice and this is about opening up the back of the throat again it's always about creating space in the body so again going right back to the beginning where we talked about the physical release of tension the more that you can have them in a place of playfulness um, and I always talk about our lives don't depend on this, not at the moment. Um, and so the more that you can have them in a place of playfulness and um, an ease in their body, actually the more that you will hear their voice in the space. 
So um, this next exercise from Barbara Hausman's book, Finding Your Voice, it's about opening up the, the back of the throat and it's imagining. So first of all, you ask them to place a hand at the base of the skull. May just feel that and always make sure that they are taking their hand to their head rather than what some people do when we're doing exercises. We take the head to wherever the hands are, but actually to keep that really good alignment as we are rehearsing, not necessarily as we're creating character on stage, but to keep that good alignment, you want to take the hand to the back of the head. And just imagine that underneath that hand, at the base of the head, the skull there, that there is a mouth there. So you are creating a tube that runs from your open mouth all the way to the back here. So there's two mouths. For some people, that image doesn't really sit well with them. Um, it, could, it does kind of, I don't want to use the American term, but uh, gross people out sometimes with that thought. But this is to help them imagine that there is this open space being created at the back of the mouth. Because some people want to close down that space. And as we said, actually our body is the voice loudspeaker. So it's almost the more that you ask someone to shout or be loud, actually sometimes the more that they will close down the spaces, inhibiting the voice from actually being in the space. So this exercise, very simple, asking them to imagine that as they speak, this mouth at the back is also opening and mirroring the mouth, their actual mouth. So I'm saying, hello, my name is Hazel, and I can feel that the space at the back of my mouth is also opening, creating more space for resonance, for vibrations to be created and to flow out into the space. So you could start that exercise very simply again on counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then take that more into conversational counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we ask the next question. Can the actor be understood? So we've looked at can they be heard, looking at their connection to breath, looking at how breath can support the text and also support their voice. And then we've also looked at resonance, how they can create volume without having to push actually it's within the loudspeaker that is your body. So now can they be understood? Let's have a look at some exercises for articulation to increase clarity. So one of the reasons why we look at articulation exercises is because we want to make sure that we help to free the articulation um, muscular system, such as the tongue, the lips, the jaw, um, soft palate so we keep all of these things free and easy to aid the clarity of communication so one of the first things that i like to start off with is just some chewing and you can start with that chewing so start by isolating how you're chewing quicken at the front and then that grows in the mouth mm. bigger until it starts to involve the whole face Keeping the neck free. It's almost like the eyes are chewing as well as the mouth and the nose. You can direct them into different parts of the face that are, is leading the chewing. I'm sure I look great on screen doing this. Um, and then we move into really focusing on releasing, you know, we can have a little self-massage. 
one that the actors always love is releasing this masseter to muscle down the side of the jaw just drawing the hands it can feel quite painful for some people if people are used to um, teeth grinding at night um, and really clamping these jaw muscles tightly this could actually be quite painful for them another thing that i encourage people to do actors to do is to actually sit in a private space when they're at home so i wouldn't recommend it when you're outside in space but just to sit with the jaw hanging whilst you're watching television or reading a book and i talk about it's about allowing that muscle to feel a sense of length because suddenly if we've been spending the majority of our time with the muscle tense and constricted and then all of a sudden you are asking the muscle to release for stage work it's going to it's actually going to find it very difficult to do that so actually by incorporating that into some release into their everyday life they are helping the muscle to loosen and release next thing that we look at is Mm. releasing the lips so turning that horsey kind of like breathy sound into um very um focused tone say it's a motorbike moving around the space that you take yourself on a journey through space so all those kind of playful facial release um, exercises that again take them into a place of playfulness and ease a lovely exercise that Jeanette Nelson head of voice at the National Theatre does to help release the tongue is um, playing with the word giggly so giggly 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 so you can feel that back of tongue engaging so maybe you could ask your young actors where can they feel their tongue um what part of the tongue do they feel they are using as they move through that word giggly giggly so you could maybe start in slow motion Giggly, 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 giggly. If you're in a group, you could maybe have one person do a nice little rhythm on that word. Giggly, 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 giggly. And then other people join them on that. Giggly, 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 giggly. So um, I have also extended that into using other sounds. So bibbly, 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 or kickly, 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 ninnily, 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 diddly, diddly, diddly. Ultimately, the articulation exercises are about making sure that they feel a real sense of ease in the mouth. So asking the jaw to hang asking the tongue itself to be very playful in the mouth are all things that will aid articulation of the text so now i'd like to look at one exercise that will hopefully allow them to land their voice in the space um, this is a, just again about asking them to be really playful. And I talk about being almost like, um, you're moving in slow motion in the space and your voice is following. As they do that, if they can stay on one note, you can ask them and direct them to stay on one note and each time that they take a breath, they can change note. But by doing that, hopefully the channel that we were working on earlier with the, the silent warming of the mirror, the channel will stay open and free. And then as you take them from that slow motion, 
into conversational text. Again, the throat will stay open, which will again allow the voice to be out into the space. And one last exercise would be for them to call across to each other in the space, just a very gentle, hey, 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 hey. And then taking that hey into text, hey, you have ungently Brutus stolen from my bed. So another way actually of using this is asking them to play their scenes actually across the space. So rather near to each other, again, if this is um, during COVID, um, they'll have two meters space from each other anyway, but actually increasing the space and asking them still to land their voices on each other. Hey, Brutus. You have ungently, Brutus, stolen from my bed. Hopefully that's another little exercise that will help you to get them to extend their voice. Also, I really like the word that um, Christina Schul introduced to me, which was extending the voice in the space. Because sometimes if we use the voice, use the word projection, there's a negative connotation that can sometimes be felt in the body of having to push, project something into something. And actually what you're asking them to do is to um, love their voice, love their body, and just extend that. 360 so their voice is not only from here but again resonating from their body they're breathing into their back again the voice is resonating through the body opening up the neck all of these things are asking the voice to extend into the space so I hope some of those exercises have been really helpful for you. I hope some of them have been new to you and um, I'm wishing you all the best in your journey of asking your students and young actors to extend their voices into the space and to increase their clarity. Thank you.